Welcome back. You're watching Closing Trades on ET now. Nifty as of now 22,150 levels is what it is at. Off the day's highest point, but yes, did manage to touch that all-time high level today for the Nifty 50. So that's interesting to watch out for. But let's bring on board Pawan Parikh, a director and fund manager at Renaissance Investment Managers as well. Uh, Pawan, very good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining in with us. And let's talk about Nifty hitting the all-time high levels today. What's looking attractive? Still going to be looking at the large cap space now? Yeah, hi. Um, so, yeah, so if you look at macro and domestic factors, you know, I think there's hardly anything to complain about. And in that light, markets are hitting a all time high. But I must tell you, at this point in time, uh, except for, say, select names in the banking side or the FSI side, you've hardly got any valuation comfort as far as the broader market is concerned. There could be a few bottoms idea here and there where you can find good uh, balance between say risk and reward both in terms of earning growth and potential for P to re rate. But otherwise, if you see valuation is a very big concern and that pay in that background, we are happy to have a higher allocation to a large cap and in a mid cap small cap fund also we are happy to have higher allocation to mid cap versus small caps. And we, I mean, it's a little confusing state because all the macros are pointing towards a positive movement. But value is not there, so we're trying to hedge our bets in a manner so that if the market correct, uh, we've got companies with strong earning growth, and uh, uh, and in, in that case, we could we can potentially uh, outform uh, even in a potentially falling market. Exactly that. That's a million dollar question. How are you hedging your portfolio? Which spaces, sector, stocks still uh, you know look interesting in the sense of risk reward? Right, so I think uh, we are increasing our bets on the BFSI side. Uh, I think last six months there's been a decent correction out there. This is one sector wherein earning growth uh, certainty is high, uh, valuations are comfortable. Apart from that, we continue to be very positive in the IT sector. I think uh, uh, once again, we stick our next more on the large cap side on the IT side also, because if you look at a lot, lot of these IT companies, they have got some large contracts which would help them in terms of growth for next two, three quarters. And in this next two, three quarters, we would want to believe that globally also things should be a little sanguine wherein, uh, you know, the overall momentum in terms of new order flows and execution should also pick up. We are, we are also very positive on pharma because pharma, if you look, uh, I think they are, they, that's a positive both on domestic side and on the US side. Over the last three, six months, we've seen uh, price correction has been arrested or, or should I say that the, the the acceleration in price correction trend that we were seeing that actually come down and domestic market is a steady market of about 10 12 percent growth and apart from that we are also liking a few tech names i think they've corrected quite a bit over the last eight, six nine months so those are essentially the sectors we have actually positioned our portfolio heavily that's the word there. But, you know, let's just mark the flashes that are coming in on your screen. We did speak about that before as well. And that is Coal India as the stock of water markets down 4% as of now as well. Obviously, the company did say that they may miss their FY24 production goal of 780 metric tons by 10 metric ton. Other than that, the e-auction premiums have fallen from 115, 120 levels to around 45 levels in 45 percent levels in Q4 as well. Uh, 40 to 50 percent of the premium can be the norm at e auctions, as that's the word coming in from agencies as well. But yes, because of that, we have seen a sharper fall coming in. If you see the stock price right now as well is down almost 4.5 percent as well. Request the producer to pull out the stock price as well. They furthermore said that to offer 15 percent of Jan to March production through e auctions, the company will uh, bid for critical minerals mines in India as well but they will be missing their FI24 production goal also as well and that is why the sharper fall that we've seen coming in as of now on coal India also look at it at the day's lowest point as of now that's coal India that is there on the charts as well lowest point of the day as of now but um, you know, uh, Sudeep, let's just talk about a few more stocks that I want to highlight as well and uh, you know in terms of uh, when you're looking at the railway pack you know, are you still finding these railway stocks attractive today? Also, they are running away in trade as well, Sudeep. Whether you look at an RVNL, IRCTC, IRFC, all of them are buzzing away in trade. So, uh, what's the word on that, uh, Sudeep, on the charts? Uh, yeah, so while uh, there was an early morning gush in the uh, railway pack, but uh, throughout the day from higher levels, we have seen these names cooling off a bit. So I feel there would there could be some uh, there could be some more consolidation that we could witness in these names whether it is uh, RVNL, IRCON, Railtel, Rights, IRFC. 
all these names if we see uh, are witnessing some kind of uh, say uh, pressure from higher levels and not able to sustain the intraday gains also so i feel uh, uh, we could still see some uh, more consolidation in, into the railway pack and uh, uh, that is uh, uh, specifically we are uh, all these stocks are uh, if you see the february 9th uh, uh, candles and most of these uh, they're not able to cross that particular highs so i feel there could still be more consolidation uh, going ahead on all these railway names Consolidation to continue, but just take a look at some of these insurance companies. While PB FinTech is clearly excited about the composite license it's going to get, which will open up the doors for the reinsurance business, you have HDFC Life as well as SBI Life, which are coming under pressure. So divergent moves there. Uh, the other stock on my radar is HDFC AMC. That stock is down a solid 4%. And then, of course, you have other names as well, like Crystal, which is actually performing very well for itself. Usually, we don't see high volumes or big moves on Crystal, but today that stock is reacting because the earnings commentary post its um, you know results as well has been quite uh, impressive Nuresh on the charts uh, Crystal, HDFC, AMC these couple of these insurance companies HDFC Life, SBI Life would you be a buyer on dips? So uh, the top favorite as of now would remain SBI Life because that's the one which has been an outperformer in the insurance space it hit a new 52 week high and all time high yesterday and now the stock has dipped back giving a good entry point so that's the first one SBI Life looks interesting uh, in the rating space, care uh, looks promising because the stock has uh, been a good uptrend, consolidated well, classical higher top higher bottom formation. Today also made a new 52 week high. So that's a stock which would slowly and steadily continue in this trend. And the stock had topped out back at 16,700 in 2015 to 2017. So there could be a slow and steady catch up with Crystal in this stock. So out of these names, uh, I would go with SBI Life and Care Ratings. Okay, that's the word there. But, uh, you know, um, Pawan, I'm going to come to you. The overall EMS pack, when you look at the EMS sector, that's been picking up a lot of pace. Interest is coming in over there a lot. Even the government is pushing for these companies as well. Uh, whether you look at Dixon Tag, Amber Enterprises, Keynes Technologies, Sirma, you know, are you finding that very attractive? Would you still want to look at these companies? Because they've already seen a very good run up. But, you know, in terms of when you look at the companies, Commentaries that come in, they are expecting a further growth in terms of fundamental wise as well. So what's your view on the CMS a pack as a whole? So yeah, very clearly in my opinion, EMI is a, EMI, EMS is a sunrise sector in India. I think whatever the stocks have done, I would have, I, I would actually firmly believe, take a 5 10 year view, you will have multi-billion dollar large cap emerging from this sector. We've just seen the tip of the iceberg. Uh, though I still agree that, you know, uh, the valuations across the board here look a little expensive, but I must also I must also highlight that this is not a sector where you where you will see linear growth. You will see step jump growth, and in that respect, if you see a lot of these companies would look so very expensive. So classic case is one of the companies like Dixon, which we own in our portfolio. Uh, in terms of mobile segment, it is not a business that's growing at a linear pace. The moment they add one new customer, uh, straight away three to five thousand crores of incremental revenue gets added to the top line. So I would request investors and analysts to look at this sector not from a linear point of view, but from a step jump point, of, from step jump growth point of view. And in that set, in that respect, if you say take a ten year view, I will not be surprised that the industry is at least five times bigger from where we are, and the value addition also increases tremendously over the next five ten years. So I think this is a stock wherein obviously on the headline basis valuations look a little expensive, but if at all anybody is not con uh, convinced, it should be bought at every dips. That's the view coming in and of course some of these electronic manufacturing companies are set to be the large caps of tomorrow and multifold growth is expected. At least that is the view coming in from Pawan as well. Uh, Pawan, I remember earlier ICIC Bank was one of the favorites within the BFSI pack. But have you broadened it a bit either in terms of the PSU banking names or the you know second rung banking names, the IDFC, the Yes Banks, RBLs of the world? No, not really, not really. We are actually sticking, sticking our guns to those same names, just that we've, uh, we've increased our allocation a bit on HDFC Bank and at the same time we increased our allocation to SBI. I think that is what we've done largely on the BFSI side as far as we are concerned in the last 3-6 months. This addition uh, in terms of uh, you know where you have put money to work, what is the cash level that you're sitting on right now? How are you, you know, uh, Going towards your portfolio allocation at this time, at this point of time. 
So at different points in time, the cash levels in our portfolio generally between three to six percent. We are not amongst those funds which 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 create large cash on the portfolios unless we believe that we could see a big meltdown in the markets because we believe India is a large growth market and and in that kind of scenario, if you end up having say something like fifteen twenty twenty five percent cash on your portfolio, uh, a month wrong can actually uh, create a big drag on the portfolio returns. And if you look at the current situation, as we discussed just about a couple of minutes back, if you look at macro scenario, both domestic and globally, all the figures, you know, point out towards a better, uh, say, 2024, as far as geopolitics or political scenario or fundamental scenario, inflation scenario, interest rate. So, I mean, just to summarize, macros look good. So, what we are not amongst the camp which would create large, uh, large, large cash on the portfolio. We would rather want to have more defenses in the portfolio if we think the markets are overvalued, but not we are not in the favor of creating large cash in the portfolio. So, we are about winning three to five, six percent of cash in our portfolio. Okay, but uh, you know, last week also, let's just listen into what Esther Industries chairman Arvind Singhania had to say. He expects a bounce back coming in in the specialty polymer business as well. So let's go across and listen into what he had to say in terms of the trajectory for the next few quarters. We are going through certain uh, uh, downturn right now, which is more uh, capacity overhang related as far as the film business is concerned. And as far as the specialty polymer business is concerned, it's it's only because of the downturn uh, and recession in Europe and America, which are our major markets. We expect a bounce back in the specialty polymer business very, very shortly in the maybe in the next couple of months, we should be back to normal, not couple of months, sorry, a couple of quarters. And, uh, and the capacity overhang as far as polyester film is concerned may take a little bit longer, but we expect to see start seeing some improvements very shortly. So that's Esther Industries sitting with a gain of around 7 to 10%, expecting a bit of a recovery in the specialty business in a couple of quarters. But let me quickly take it across to my colleague Sharad as well to get a dealing room check going as to which is the stock on the dealing room's radar. Sharad. Well, the dealer buzz in the stocks is Deepak Nitrite and it's expected that large orders or inquiries are coming from the large customers. Now, importantly, the phenol prices, they are also expected to rise this week. And if you look at the Chinese markets, that's very interesting because they are shut due to the lunar year. And the Chinese phenol prices, they have actually shot up by almost 5% on a week-on-week -week basis. And importantly, trading in the important levels of $1,100 per ton. Now, it's important that the Chinese lunar year that's expected to close on February 24 itself with demand also rising and importantly channel checks are also suggesting that this could be the final round of corrections and stability coming in the commodity chemicals which is expected to happen over the last over the next two to three weeks now importantly the con call was also there on 16th of this month and two important things have come from Deepak Nitrate they have stated that the fourth quarter is expected to see a sequential volume uptick as compared to the third quarter and importantly they are likely to sustain the growth rates in FI25 because of the commissioning of key projects which would be there, which would be largely increasing the volumes as well as the margin in the near term basis. Thanks so much uh, for that, Sharad. Keeping an eye on the Puck Night Ride. As of now, a bit under pressure, down almost a percent. Pawan, you know, uh, there are a few names that I want to talk about as well, and uh, some of them coming in from the Pharma Pack, right? So, overall, when you're looking at the Pharma Pack, whether you look at a Biocons, Idis Life, all these names are coming up. You know, the mid cap size of the Pharma side is also looking quite attractive. Anything if you're to pick out from the mid cap space, you know, would you which? I mean, we own Zydus and Synthia in our portfolio. I think both of these companies. Companies, you know, doing some very wonderful work as far as new project, new uh, product pipeline is concerned. Uh, Syngene, in specific in case, has created some very large capacities for upcoming molecules. Uh, the engagement with customers uh, seem to be very promising. So I think that is what we restricted ourselves so far uh, uh, in the in the mid cap space. Another company that we also own in our portfolio is Alembic. I think that is one company which has also created a lot of capacity ahead of time. Uh, over the last two, three years, you know, these capacities were hitting cost, uh, but revenues were not coming in. I, over the next two, three years, as revenues start coming in, you will see a big operating leverage out there. Uh, apart from that, what we really like in the pharma space, essentially companies which operate in the domestic market, but unfortunately, valuations, once again, uh, like as the case with broader market, valuation here also is very, very, very expensive. So we are trying to stay away from those names. Uh, so that is how broadly we have placed in the pharma side. 
Okay. Um, Pawan, you guys have been uh, allocators to the new age tech vertical as well, right? And clearly, PB FinTech is doing quite well and Paytm at least for now seems to be out of the woods at least is holding up with an upper circuit. I think Friday also that stock was blocked in upper circuit. Would you hazard a bet into Paytm at this point of time and what's the view on PB FinTech now? See, without getting uh, stock specific out here, the only thing I would like to tell here is that uh, I think uh, RBI governor has very clearly highlighted that they are not against tech, and I think tech is tech will play a very important part uh, as far as the entire BFSI space is concerned. And if you look, despite the uh, millions and billions and trillions of uh, UPI transaction that we've had. I think we've just seen the beginning of it. We have a long way to go. Similar is the case with PB FinTech on the insurance side. I think if you look at the entire tech insurance, insure tech market, um, I mean, uh, with, with, with whatever market share PB FinTech has, um, it's it's a very, very, very small market is, uh, is there. So take a five-year view. I think tech side of the business will emerge very strong. Uh, I think it's very important despite uh, after the run-up that some of these stocks have seen, and I'm referring to PVFintech, I think it is important for, uh, I think, uh, investors to assess the fair valuation of these companies. Because three or four years down the line, uh, uh, these will these will, come, these, these will be companies where the growth rate will be similar to, say, large names like 15-20%. Right? And that kind of a scenario, would you want to give the kind of premium valuation that they're having now? Is a question that one should assess and one should question. Because the current market price clearly factors in all the good things that are going to happen over the next three to five years. Uh, and if growth growth rates were to taper off after three to five years, I think valuations are here to compress. Uh, so I think that is one thing that uh, you know investors should be uh, really really uh, careful of. Okay. So Deep, you know, I want to talk about a couple of these names, and you know, let's pull up trend. In the last one year, look at the upmove that we've already seen in the stock. Right? It's last one year, the stock has been up more than two hundred percent. Let's talk about ABFRL, Trent and Arvind Fashions. You know, in this pack, there's no stopping Trent as of now, Sudeep. Where do you see this headed? Do you know, would you bet on these other players like Arvind Fashions or ABFRL right now instead of a Trent? See, uh, that uh, trend in Trent is very strong. If we see it is just uh, moving from strength to strength and even at higher levels now, uh, I guess a fortnight back, the results were announced and we saw trend even strengthening from those uh, higher levels also. So the numbers are uh, in sync with the stock price. So uh, in a way, trend is not overbought. Uh, however, looking at the momentum, I feel slight cool off can be witnessed uh, from a technical perspective. But uh, beyond trend, if we have to uh, say uh, choose between Arvind Fashions and ABFRL, I feel Arvind Fashions is still a much better chart. Uh, even uh, in the last uh, several uh, weeks or even even last uh, three four months, for for instance, uh, the stock is on an uh, uptrend and uh, steady buying is witnessed there. But uh, in terms of ABFRL, there there is uh, always a case of selling pressure from higher levels uh, being visible. Now, if you see, uh, stock is not uh, able to sustain above 250, 260 levels. So every time it moves there, there is some uh, pressure from higher levels. So I feel uh, uh, trend is the obvious choice. But uh, beyond trend, uh, uh, Arvind Fashions would be the preferred pick ahead of uh, ABFRL. The recommendations from the retail space and the pecking order at that. Just take a look at Bajaj Auto as well. That stock has been holding up very well for itself. Of course, the record date for the buyback was out. It was announced to be 29th February. The buyback price is much higher than the current market price of the stock. So clearly, there's that renewed buying interest which is coming through as far as Bajaj Auto is concerned, sitting at record high levels. Even though it's come off the highest point of the trading session, nonetheless holding up in the green. Bosch is the other one which has made quite a bit of comeback. Within the pharma pack, take a look at Natco Pharma. Since the commentary post the con call, that stock has been firing away. Sanofi India is also doing quite well. And then Novartis India, we have been telling you the kind of gains it's been seeing for itself. Just uh, flagging out some of all-time high stocks. It's uh, Dixon, Sonata Software. Reddington forms part of that list. And a view on that one, Pawan? No, not really. We don't own that stock in the portfolio, and I think uh, uh, we we are really believers that companies which don't have a good EV portfolio in the long run, despite the earnings growth, uh, you've seen Bosch valuation rate valuation getting compressed, and there's scope for further compression out here unless they are able to build build a good EV portfolio. 
So we are right now staying away from that talk. Staying away from that spot. In fact, on that note, Pawan, we let you go. Good to get you on the show and get your insights on the markets right now. Uh, Coal India, that continues to buzz quite a bit for itself. So the e-auction prices have fallen off the cliff. Uh, there is a possibility that the company might miss its production target and that's the reason that stock continues to see lower levels. There's a cut of 5% there. Uh, we have discussed this, Nuresh, but just come back on Coal India as well as the other metal names that you like right now. So Coal India has had a, a one-way run a consolidation going back to 440, 450 would be normal. And then maybe have a look at it. So in terms of metals, uh, what would be interesting is uh, sale because that corrected from the highs of 150 and 150 was the top roughly back in 2021. And now 120 looks like a base. On dips, uh, Steel Authority of India sale looks uh, promising. Uh, then Vedanta looks uh, very interesting because that's been uh, consolidating between 250, 55 on the downside, 280 on the upside. And it has not seen any re-rating whereas uh, the whole sector has done really well over the last few months. So uh, these two names uh, which have been... Uh, uh, sideways and uh, good enough uh, risk reward possibilities here. So I'll go with Sale and Vedanta. Sale and Vedanta are better bets and watching out for those 420 levels there about for Coal India. Thank you, Nuresh, as well as Sadiq for joining us and taking us through the last hour of the trading session. But that's how we are wrapping up the day.